Awesome. So I think we could uh, get started here with um, our introduction. So um, as you may know, my name is Carla, uh, founder of Cycle CPA. We're a bookkeeping and accounting firm. So doing anything from your basic bookkeeping all the way to CFO level services. And we are specializing in the green industry. So we just work with clients in this space and excited here to uh, join you in this webinar about estimating best practices and um, some financial insight. Awesome. Thanks, Carla. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Appreciate and looking forward to to the conversation today. My name is David Arnold, the managing partner at 212 Advisors, and we help landscape companies achieve operational excellence uh, and increase gross margin through implementation of standard operational processes. So a lot of SOP focus, making sure that uh, things are consistent. Uh, we have a, no a novel approach because unlike other landscape consultants, we really focus on maximizing the benefits of the Aspire software program. So that is our niche is focusing and working with, with landscape companies that use Aspire software as their primary business software. Today's webinar will uh, touch on estimation best practices, considering production rates and premium services. So we'll have a good conversation on that. And in addition, Carla will be touching on job costing, accounting analysis, and all kinds of CPA stuff that is maybe uh, really exciting. <laughs> We're looking forward to that. <laughs> so uh, my hope is that after this webinar, uh, you'll have identified some areas to consider for improvement in your business, right? So we're investing some time tonight. So hopefully there'll be some great takeaways. So please note uh, the chat feature on the bottom right of the screen. So feel free to write questions in the chat box. And towards the end or at the end of the webinar, we'll answer as many of those questions as we can. So feel free to do that at any time and, and we'll come back around on those. So if there's not anything else, we'll get started. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, starting again, uh, my focus uh, talking about the, the process of estimation and some best practices within the, the focus or conversation of estimation. So first I wanna talk about production rates. I wanna look at a definition of what a production rate is. So we define this as a unit of measurement that when provided, will calculate the labor and material necessary to complete a task. So we'll go into some specifics on this, but let's talk about what the benefit of using production rates are. So we've got a few things to think about consistency in estimating the same services over and over. So we're not having to reconsider uh, how we got to, to the estimation of a service. So that's part of, of a benefit. Uh, efficiency, so not starting from scratch when estimating similar services so we can duplicate and, and get through more estimates in a less amount of time. Uh, of course, we have a job costing component. So identifying what segments in a service need to be revisited to ensure that profit margins are reached. So, you know, we're, we're all doing this to win. We want to win uh, when we're producing this work. And so when we're not winning, we want to make sure we identify where that is. And then not only do we have the specific segments of a service, but we have the job in total. So we want to understand, again, did we come away with a target margin? Uh, and if we didn't, let's make sure we can identify what production rate might have been off and we can make some adjustments. And then lastly, the scalable. So production rates allow for any estimator. So uh, we can put anyone in the estimator seat, provide them some training, and they can produce a similar result to an estimator, maybe sitting across the state or across the country. So that's a, that's a benefit to production rates and utilizing those in our estimation process. So I'm gonna give you some examples of production rates. So we're utilizing the Aspire, Aspire software here, showing some examples. And so in, in this particular production rate, we're talking about lawn mowing. And so the factor of 4.5 thousand square feet is what we've determined that we can cut in a time of one hour. 
So if we were to create an estimate for 10,000 square feet of lawn mowing, it would generate a budget of 2.2 hours. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about our production rate. So if we were to change this 10,000 square feet to a number of 45,000 square feet, by using this equation, we're gonna get that accurate number of hours to produce the work. So this is called a kit. Uh, what we're calculating is the production rate. I'll give you another example of a, of a production rate. We're gonna talk about mulch installation. So bark mulch or some places we have pine straw, lots of different materials we might be using. So in this example, it's been determined uh, by the company that the production rate is 3.5 hours per thousand square feet. So I'm gonna take my team, one guy, three and a half hours to apply material over 1,000 square feet of flower bed. And then in addition to that, how much material is it gonna take? Uh, we've determined that 3.5 cubic yards of material for 1,000 square feet. And that is gonna be a one inch of bark mulch. So we understand what the depth is, so we know what we're producing. So going back to an example, if we were to use this kit to estimate 5,000 square feet of flower bed, it would generate an estimate or a budget of 17.5 7 hours of labor to produce the work to install the mulch and 17.5 cubic yards of mulch. So to break off a little bit and just touch on how you might determine some of these numbers, I'm not gonna get into too much of the detail, but wanna give you a little glimpse. So when we talk about a cubic yard and we are potentially gonna use a wheelbarrow to install that mulch. Uh, a, a wheelbarrow is calculated with cubic feet. So now we have to do an equation again. So if you're an estimator, uh, maybe you want to make sure you like some mathematics because part of that is gonna be your responsibility. Uh, so a wheelbarrow typically is six cubic feet or eight cubic feet. So I'm gonna call it six cubic feet and a cubic yard has 27 cubic feet. So we take three feet by three feet, which is nine by three feet. And that gives us the total cubic yard. We've got 27 cubic feet. So when we take that cubic foot six in a wheelbarrow and talk about how many wheelbarrow loads will it take to produce that 27 cubic feet or one cubic yard, we get to start to have a conversation of how long this is gonna take. My guys need to fill the wheelbarrow and then from there they need to wheelbarrow or, or transfer that material over to the flower bed, dump the material, spread it out, rake it, fine rake it, whatever that is. So now if we're saying it's gonna take one hour to produce one cubic yard, which is six wheelbarrows approximately, uh, we're going to take 10 minutes, 12 minutes to, to produce the work. So we can start talking with our team and understanding if that's reasonable or not reasonable. We're not gonna define that today. Uh, different for every company in different situations, but that's a little glimpse into how we might determine some of these production rates. So I'm gonna go into an example of lawn fertilizer. So uh, in this situation, we have uh, determined that 30,000 square feet of fertilizer can be applied in one hour. And so remember in this situation, we're using a broadcast spreader. So you know we might be able to spread eight to 10 feet paths. So that's how we're gonna cover 30,000 square feet in an hour. Uh, as far as material goes, it's been determined that six pounds of material per thousand square feet. So these are the drivers that are going to uh, end up dictating you know, what it's gonna take to get the job done. So if we were to estimate 15,000 square feet of, of turf that we wanna fertilize, uh, run it through the equation, it's gonna take 90 pounds of fertilizer and a half hour of labor. Now keep in mind, uh, the way Aspire works is that we set up these production rates at the beginning of using the system and we get to start to use this stuff time and time again. So when we go to do an estimate, we just enter 15,000 square feet 
and it does the rest of the work for us. So that's the benefit of taking the time to identify what our production rates are, building these, these systems or kits, and then mm -hmm. starting to utilizing them uh, within the estimate. So what we were looking at was production rates, and then in part, these were kits that have multiple, multiple items in them. So as an example, a kit can have a lot of things. So we've got a labor component. Uh, we talked about a fertilizer or a mulch component, but we can add more, uh, more items on this. And so in this case, this is an example of a paver install. So to prep for a paver install, we have the labor component. So we're gonna need labor to remove the existing material. And then we're gonna need labor to put our base or, or maybe our gravel or rock back in. We're gonna need to compact it and screed the sand preparing for the next kit, which would be the paver install, the actual install of the paver. So these kits can be built pretty robust. Uh, you can cover a lot of things within a kit, a lot of activities. So you could have a complete install prep paver install, paver finish, which includes sweeping the sand and cutting the pavers, the edging, all that could be in one, one kit if that's how you decided it would be best for your company. So there's some great benefits from utilizing, again, the, the system and, and the process of, of production rates and the kits. So I wanna talk a little bit about uh, materials inside the system and how we enter those materials, which ultimately plays a role in how we use them. So uh, item purchase versus allocation unit. So Aspire allows you to differentiate the purchase unit and the allocation unit per item. So chemicals is a great example. Uh, in this scenario, we've got speed zone. So that might be a broadleaf uh, herbicide that will be applying to the turf. And we're gonna buy that product in a 2.5 gallon, two and a half gallon jug. But we're not gonna use the product in a two and a half gallon segment or unit. We're not gonna use it in even gallons. Uh, typically, we're gonna be mixing, or not mixing, but applying it in ounces. So we might mix a lot in a spray tank, 250 gallons uh, capacity spray tank. But when we're actually trying to track to the job or to a ticket or to you know how much product needs to go on this specific lawn, we wanna talk about you know, ounces. So what we would do is in the initial setup, identify that we have that 2.5 gallon, the, we've gotta do some math again. I know that, that we like that. So we're gonna take 128 ounces times 2.5, and that's gonna get us the 320 uh, allocation unit. So the thing that I want to point out is over here, we have the original price for that 2.5 gallon jug. And then here we have the price for the allocation unit. So it's costing us 72 cents per ounce. So those are some components that if set up right, can provide some good job costing and estimation uh, outcomes. That's great. So we're gonna go to some markups. So uh, I wanna talk just a little bit about the, the strategy for pricing and understanding you know, what Aspire does and, and what we need to do as business owners. So Aspire provides the the foundation for, for determining what the prices are gonna be for services, jobs, materials, et cetera. Uh, but we wanna remember that Aspire doesn't determine those costs by Aspire telling us what it should cost. Uh, we need to make sure that we're considering what our strategy is as a business owner. So as a business owner, I wanna understand what will the market bear and what, it's, what is it gonna take to be profitable? And that's going to determine what kind of markups we're going to put in these fields to end with a price, to actually get a price that's going to push out and, and go to the, 
to the client. And so Aspire has a, a lot of flexibility here, uh, allowing uh, sorting by branch or different prices per branch. So it could be different regions in the country, of course, different divisions. So we're going to charge a different markup for our maintenance services than we might for our project services. And it will even allow you to go a little more detailed with regards to a service type. So in this case, we have field mowing. So we might be able to charge a premium for that field mowing because it takes a tractor or special equipment. And I wanna make sure I get an additional markup on that. So um, this allows a, a lot of flexibility, but going back to being consistent. Once we set these things up, we get to price time and time again in a consistent manner. Uh, so that is you know allows us to to find those successes and and adjustments where need be so uh david what i'm getting a sense of is you set up your kits based on the services you're providing on aspire and you can use those on a long-term basis to create consistent estimates and pricing for your clients that's correct and and to add to the component of uh, as we're growing and we're adding additional personnel to actually estimate the jobs, yeah. uh, we have that foundation there. So the the time frame to get an estimator onboarded or trained in place uh, shortens quite a bit, and that's wow. that's pretty important. Yep, I can yep. see that. That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about premium services. So. Within our industry, and again, as we're talking about this, it's different for every company, different regions, different focuses. So I'm just going to give some examples here. But uh, we all know that uh, the landscape industry is a competitive industry, and there are certain areas that the market will only bear certain prices or margins. Uh, but there are other areas uh, of services that we provide that we might be able to get a premium for. So to give you some examples and, and the ability to take advantage of some of those areas, enhancements is one, uh, irrigation repair, so service work, that's one, snow and ice management. And let's face it, if we're out there working 24 hours a day, it's dangerous, no, we can justify a little, little more margin there. Uh, chemical applications, that's another example of, uh, the ability to potentially have a premium service. I do want to note uh, one thing with regards to enhancements and projects. So we typically define enhancements as a service like a project, a shrub bed renovation or, or some kind of small install. Those are generally sold by an account manager to an existing client. And the project services, these are maybe new construction, uh, they're typically sold by a sales rep and it's not to an existing client. So it's really important to understand the difference between that because in our industry, it's really valuable. An enhancement sale is much more valuable if you were to sell your company than a project is. I can get into another conversation for another another day, but kind of be curious about that and understand how you're doing things and, and it might justify an additional conversation down the road. So let's just talk about uh, what would allow us or justify us to, for a service to be premium. So when we're talking about enhancements, there's a couple angles on this, uh, value of your relationship and knowledge of the property. So if you're working with a property manager, a HOA board liaison, a residential homeowner, uh, we get to know the property, we get to understand certain things about it. Uh, that is valuable to the client. Don't fool yourself and talk yourself into the fact that it's not. It is valuable and, and they're willing to pay to have you do something on their property rather than bringing someone in that doesn't know. Client is less likely to receive competitive bids since you're already doing work for them understand that understand that you don't have to lower your margins down to the competition but yet you've got to be profitable and and making sure that you're finding different areas different segments in your business that you can grab some of that better margin irrigation is another example so requires technical expertise uh hopefully our our irrigation techs have some experience 
and they have some knowledge so that they're going to be effective and uh, maybe efficient with with these repairs. A lot of times these are time and materials. So we want to make sure that not all of their time is investigative time, but some of it is uh, through experience able to identify and make repairs. That justifies a premium a premium price. Of course, the stock, uh, the cost of stock and supplies in the vehicles. So in these irrigation vans, tools and parts, you know, we're gonna have thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, that also justifies a premium price. So just consider those things. There's some, some great angles there. So take a deep breath and now it's off for you, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, David. That was awesome information. David is an uh, industry expert, of course, and Aspire expert. And um, that was great information. So thank you for that. Absolutely. So, uh, I'll go in and I'll talk more about revenue metrics and job costing, um, two very important aspects on the financial side of your business that you should be tracking for different reasons that I'll go over now. So revenue per field employee, um, very important metric if you're just starting off and you're going to get ready to hire that first employee. Um, right. But also, if you're already established um, within the business and you're looking to scale and add more employees on. So um, definitely important, whether you're just starting off or been in business for um, a few years now. So the formula is pretty straightforward. Revenue divided by total amount of field employees. So it's important not to compare this metric between businesses in different regions uh, just because um, your pricing might be different. Um, for example, prices are much higher in California than they were um, to be in Ohio. So uh, another thing to note is that admin and executive staff. So for example, your office um, admin work or your bookkeeper or anything like that, don't include them in this metric, just strictly your field employees. And uh, we all know that labor expense is uh, large within this industry here. So um, it's important to track your uh, employees' productivity, right? Um, are they be, being efficient out in the field? And if they're not, implementing ways for them to be more efficient on the job and maybe um, sticking to a tighter budget on hours per job, right? So this metric is such an important tool to use for those reasons. <clears throat> revenue per field employee uh, is different between service lines uh, because, for example, in a maintenance company, you have lower revenue per employee when compared to design and build, right? Because in the maintenance, um, your revenue is not as high because in design and build, you have more material costs. And so your revenue is going to be higher in order to recoup those material costs. So um, something to note there, if you have different divisions within your company, revenue per employee is going to be um, slightly different. <clears throat> How can we work towards a goal um, to come up with revenue per field employee for your company? So um, a good way to go about it is to work backwards to determine uh, your revenue per field employee goal. A question to ask yourself is, what profit margin are you aiming for? What is your historical labor percentage revenue and how does it compare to the industry average? <clears throat> so here in my example, I have a maintenance division that is currently uh, generating 600,000 in revenue. Uh, the industry average for field uh, labor percentage of revenue for maintenance is 35%, which is, in this example, what your business is doing now. <laughs> but in order to, um, in order for the maintenance division to hit the 15% net profit, you need to calculate that your field labor goal is 30% of revenue, right? How can we do that? So uh, currently you're generating $600,000 uh, worth of revenue, like I mentioned, and um, you're at 35% of your labor uh, percentage. 
And so if you do the 600,000 times the 0.35, you have 210,000 in total field labor costs, right? But now in order to hit your current labor, um, field labor in place, you would need to make uh, revenue of six, 700,000 in revenue. So 700,000 times your 30% is 210,000. So it's important to note that you want to um, keep the current field labor that you have, you want to keep the same expense, but you want to generate more, le uh, more uh, revenue to hit your goal. So we're not looking to uh, fire anyone because that would be an easy way to <laughs> hit your goal there. <laughs> but really, we're trying to generate more labor, uh, generate more labor, gener generate more revenue with the field labor that you currently have in place. So let's say on average that your field labor salary, including labor burden is 40,000. Um, 210,000, which is your total field labor divided by the 40,000. Um, that means that you have 5.25 uh, field labor employees. So um, maybe, you know, five time, a five full-time staff and one part-time, something like that. So you have, 700,000 is your goal, revenue goal, divided by 5.25 field laborers, so uh, employees. So that would be 133,000 about revenue per employee. So that's your goal. And that's a great way to really work backwards to figure out, you know, okay, this is what I want my profit margin to be. This is what my field labor percentage needs to be, right? But in this case, we see that we need to generate $100,000 more in revenue with the field labor that we have in place, um, which is easier said than done. How can we do that? Um, how can we reach the 133000 about uh, revenue per employee goal? Uh, to hit that, we need to determine practical goals for your team to hit. Um, and something to note is that you can divide um, the total revenue uh, goal by the amount of active months that you work. So maybe uh, where you are, it's more seasonal. Maybe it's divided by eight or something like that, eight months. So something to keep in mind. Awesome. So the average revenue per customer. And this metric really goes hand in hand with um, the revenue per employee goal here. Uh, because you want to uh, generate more revenue. And so how many customers do you need to, to do that, right? So you have your formula, you have your revenue divided by the total amount of customers that you currently have. So from the revenue per employee equation, you know what your revenue goal is, the 700,000, right, as we saw before. So knowing your average revenue per customer will show you how many customers you need, like I said. So uh, let's say that your um, current maintenance division is at 600,000 with 300 customers. Uh, this means that your average revenue per customer is 2,000. So how will you hit your uh, goal of 700,000 in revenue and 15% profit while also keeping the base of the 5.25 field employees is by utilizing better, bigger and better equipment um, maybe you're going to invest in equipment that's going to lower the amount of hours spent on a job or eliminate, you know, some um, field labor work there. You're going to upsell your clients like David had mentioned there before, which is so valuable and the easiest way to gain business. So maybe you're going to send out emails or flyers to your current clients, or maybe you're just going to have a simple conversation with them. Um, that would be a fast way to get there. Uh, reduce time. So again, uh, wasted time, reduce wasted time. So you're going to um, implement your budget hours per job, make your employees um, accountable for that. Uh, schedule out your day. So there, there's um, minimal um, time wasted um, and create an incentive bonus um, for your employees. Um, so incentivize them for finishing a job early or maybe bringing it on a customer, you know, give them that incentive so that they can perform better. <clears throat> 
Now on to uh, job costing here. So job costing is only as good as the information that's being tracked, right? If you're not tracking your direct materials, your labor or your overhead, you won't be able to job cost. And it's, I would say the biggest obstacle when it comes to job costing, if you have, um, you know, a lot of employees is holding them accountable to maybe tracking every single receipt for that specific job for the materials incurred. Um, or so you can use, you can utilize a, a software like uh, Aspire and hold them accountable to that or um, having them also track their labor um, amounts by having them clock in and out of, um, of any CRM that you're using. So, and then your overhead, it's pretty easy. You're gonna go into your accounting system. Um, you're gonna go into your QuickBooks, whatever um, accounting software you have, and you're gonna look at your overhead expenses, which is everything other than your direct materials and direct labor. So your advertising expenses, your office um, administrative staff, and so on. Allocation of overhead is based on the actual overhead. So what did what overhead did your company incur this month? Like what is the actual overhead expense? Don't just put a percentage of the history or anything like that because your company changes, you know, every every minute, every hour. So you want to base it on the uh, actual overhead, okay? Um, I see that mistake a lot. So um, here I have an example of <clears throat> just a quick you know overview so let's say you completed five jobs this month your total overhead expenses 30,000 you determine you have job one two three four your cost of services which is your direct labor and your materials for job number one was 10,000 you allocated 4,000 out of that 30 here to that specific job and you did that for all five of your job. That's the correct way to build out your job cost report accurately. A simple way to allocate this um, overhead expenses through the single overhead recovery method. Um, this is the overhead divided by the cost of services. <clears throat> All right, so job costing reports help you to expose the flaws in estimating process um, or operational system here before it becomes a problem in future jobs. So for example, if your job costing reports are showing that you have a high field labor percentage, then this will translate to a low revenue per employee uh, amount, right? So it's important to have your job cost reports because then You'll know what is off in your estimating process and you're able to then create better um, and more accurate estimates in the future. So there's there's some great checks and balances when you're talking about different KPIs if one goes up and one goes down. If we're paying attention to a couple different angles, it helps us get maybe the full picture. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, Awesome, so that was it on my end. Um, we'll take a few minutes now to uh, go through some questions here. Uh, you can start, David, I'm not sure. Let's see, any questions? Not a lot of questions tonight. <laughs> I think we went pretty in detail with a lot of the stuff here. Sure. So, um, oh, someone asked, okay, are we, we're gonna be emailing this um, webinar out. So if you missed a part or maybe you forgot to jot down some notes or anything like that, don't worry, This a copy of this video would will be sent out to everybody um, after the webinar. Uh, thanks for the info. Awesome. So, uh, David, if somebody wants to learn more about Aspire and the services you offer and how you come up with this streamlined um, method here, where can they reach you? 
Yeah, that's great. So, uh, of course, uh, phone call, that's great. So my cell phone is there on the screen. Uh, email address is always great, uh, darnold at 212advisors.com. Uh, there's lots of information on the website and you can click a few buttons on the website and look to find a little more info, but I'd be glad to, to set up time with anybody to have uh, additional conversations on some things that came up. It'd be great. Awesome. Someone actually wants to speak. So I'm going to allow that. Um, Donald. Oh, Oh, can't do it for some reason. Oh, someone asked a question actually. Chris says, does Aspire help you build a budget? So if we're, are, are we talking about potentially our like, annual budget or budget for the plan? Uh, I'm sorry, budget for the company on an annual basis. And that, that answer is no to that, right? So, the, so they are the, Aspire is the tool, the resource to operate the company. Uh, so we're talking CRM. Uh, sales, building out opportunities, estimating. Then we get to the point where we're winning them and then they go into production. So Aspire functions uh, through all of those angles. Uh, as far as building a budget, uh, if I understand your question correctly, no. Awesome. Yeah, well, you know, we we help our clients here at Cycle CPA build, build their budget and their cash flow forecast. Yeah. Um, for the next, you know, year or so. So, you know, we could definitely help you with that, uh, Chris, if, if, or answer any questions that you have on how to build a budget, right? Because it's such a such a foundational piece. Um, so in order to uh, forecast out the next months of your overhead expenses, your direct costs, your revenues, all of that good stuff. And that way you can really build on that during the year. So um, definitely very important there, Chris. Thanks for that. Awesome. Well, you know, um, if you if you guys have any questions that come up later um, in regard to bookkeeping, accounting, or CFO level services, um, please feel free to join our Facebook group, um, Landscaping Accountant, or email me at Carla P at CycleCPA.com. Oh, we have another question here. <laughs> so, uh, David, do you provide Aspire Consulting? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a primary service. Uh, someone who is currently uh, using Aspire software or looking to onboard Aspire software and are looking for some assistance in, in some of the areas of maybe best practices. Um, a great example is going back to the part where we were talking about markups. Uh, Aspire will show you how to, you know, through the onboarding or implementation program, they'll show you how to set these things up, but they're not gonna be able to help you identify what you should charge. And so I can help with some of those angles uh, on the challenges of the implementation. And then of course, as we're using Aspire down the road uh, and we get we get good at certain segments and we want to dig in deeper and, and get uh, uh, maximize the use of the software, that's something I can definitely help you out with too. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I can see how that, you know, definitely helps out in other areas where that software is not going to come into play, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, David. Well, it was so nice um, conducting this webinar with you, David. Thanks so much for joining it. me. Thanks. And um, I hope that everybody that joined had, got some value and some good information here. Absolutely. Thank you, Carla. Um, I appreciate it. No problem, David. All right. Um, thank you all for joining and uh, have a good night. Bye, David. Bye-bye.